بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہے اور آج ہم ہمارے پر دیکھیں گے پہلے ٹاپک اور وہ ہے سیگنل سو ہمارے اس کے نام سے جیسے یہ ہے دو پارٹس ہیں پہلے ہے سیگنل اور سیکنڈ ہے سسٹم سو آج ہم دیکھیں گے کہ یہ ہے سیگنل Now I forgot to show you the book in the last video as I have this method of showing the book. This is the book of the, the, the textbook that is Ellen V. Oppenheim. All right. So now what a signal is. So a signal is anything that varies. And something varies with respect to some other thing. All right. So as an engineering student, you people go go into the mathematical definition of it so mathematically it would be that a signal is a function of any independent variable all right so if i keep writing on the board so so the first thing is i would write anything that varies anything that varies all right now into the proper definition of it so signal is a function it is a function of any independent variable that is it changes with an independent variable which means that the signal is a dependent quantity now going into this any so it is a function which means function so you guys know of any independent so this any means it could be anything and this anything means it could be any in number as well which means that it could be one variable it could be two or it could be any number n so if this function depends on one variable this function is called a one dimensional signal if this depends on two so this is a two dimensional signal and if this depends on n variables so this is an n dimensional signal now this any i told you this could be anything people generally confuse the signal to be only a very or to be only a function of time which is a wrong definition well in this course we will mostly be focusing mostly what we'll be focusing a hundred percent on the signals varying with respect to time but this does not mean that 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 a signal is a function of only time all right so i will write this over here also that signal is not a function of time only signal is not a function of time only fine and and the upper one that i yelled that that anything that varies so this means that that we mostly deal with quantities as dc quantity ac quantity being electrical engineering students so which means that this dc quantity is not a signal and ac quantity is a, a signal is that clear till here all right now you have signal single variable you have multi variable so that i have seen all right now the example that that the signal is not a function of time only so can you give me an example so if i say about temperature if i say about temperature so temperature depends on what it depends on the distance or it depends on the height so which means this is not time so we have a signal that is varying with respect to the distance we we have a function that is varying with respect to distance we also call this temperature a signal but it is not varying with respect to time fine similarly we have an image an image is a signal a photo or whatever so the image is a signal which varies which is a function or which varies with respect to the brightness at different points brightness at x and y coordinates so again a function of not time and it is a 
signal is that okay so now in this particular course we will be discussing the the single dimensional time dependent signals all right in this course we will be discussing what single dimensional time dependent signals is that fine so signal dimensional time dependent which means the independent variable would be time now we have two important categories two types of signals based on this time dependency which we see today and now all right the first of them is the continuous time signal continuous time signal in short you would see me writing it as a cts later on okay so the continuous time signal is a signal that that is defined for each and every value of time that is defined for each and every value of time or if I write it like this I can say that it varies continuously with respect to time so this is the definition so this means that this continuous time signal is defined for each and every value of time ranging from a negative infinity to a positive infinity so if I draw a graph of a continuous time signal or like this so let's say this is the signal all right and first let me tell you about the representation so the continuous time signal is represented like this as x of t and have a look for the representation x is you know representing the function t is representing the time and it is enclosed in the parenthesis all right so now if this is x of t so let's say we have this sort of function it is ranging from negative infinity to like this this is x of p and this is t so have a look it is defined for each and every value of time it does not have any discontinuity at any point so this is a continuous time signal all right now the second is the discrete time signal and you will see me writing it as a dts in short later on so the discrete time signal now as the name suggests is defined only at some particular values of time define only at some particular and this particular means some discrete values of time is that fine now the symbol of this so the symbol is like this this x is again the same this represents the function and now this would the independent variable is enclosed in brackets and the independent variable is n in this case so now I'm coming to this n also so the duster here is it so let me remove some part let's say this part would be enough all right so this is now x of n now this n is also time but this is this n basically represent integer values of time n in this case is an integer and this is representing the discrete values of time representing discrete values of time Is that fine so now if I if I draw if I draw a function let's say x of n x of n so it would be like this 
it has a value it has any other value it has the same value it has any other value but have a look it is not in in continuity it is defined but it is not defined over the entire time axis it is defined for e for some particular values of time and such a sort of a signal that is defined only at particular point of time that does not have any continuity this is called as the discrete time signals all right and in this case i forgot to mention that the independent variable over here would be n over here we have t over oh, there it would be n all right now we have some properties so let's say if this is uh, t naught is at zero right yes if it if the zero point is t zero then we have t1 then t2 then t3 then t4 and so on similarly we have t negative 1 t negative 2 t negative 3 t negative 4 and so on so now if the the time interval is the same the time interval delta t may or may not be the same all right the time interval delta t may or may not be the same now what is this delta t so this delta t basically represents uh, t naught minus t negative 1 which is also equal to t uh, oh no 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 i cannot write it like this over here this delta t is the is the difference between the two uh, the two intervals of time no it is the interval between the two points of time all right so now this delta t may or may not be the same now if this is the same if delta t is the same throughout so that is that is now in this case t naught minus t negative 1 this is equal to t1 minus t0 if this is equal to t2 minus t1 and similarly you go on and on and this is equal to t n minus t n minus 1 so this is a case we call that the signal is uniformly sampled uniformly sampled and if it is not the case that is if delta t is not the same so in this case we see what that we say that this is not uniformly sampled is that fine all right now 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 why this integer n or like why this integer n so so this i will also try to to give you an understanding of it so let me remove this part of it all right if i say y integer n right and that can be time t y in this case uh, n so you know we understood it conceptually but let's say we see it mathematically what was the concept that this is only defined the at discrete values of time and that discrete values we represent with the integer <coughs> sorry now mathematically so let's say we consider a uniformly sampled signal consider uniformly sampled signal with uh, the delta t equaling a capital t fine so this would imply what that t naught minus t negative 1 is equal to t1 minus t naught is equal to t2 minus t1 is equal to go 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 like this t n minus t n minus 1 this is equal to capital t fine now let's say considering t naught equal to 0 all right so if we consider t naught equal to 0 so we can say that t1 equal to t directly have a look t naught is equal to 0 so t1 would equal to capital t directly similarly if now t1 is equal to t so you can say that t2 is equal to 2t 
T1, T2 would be equal to 2T. Similarly, you have T3 equal to 3T. And so on and on, you will have Tn equal to n times T. Is that okay? So, which means that if you have T as independent variable, So this would imply that the function is x in the bracket you have n times t, isn't it so? But if you cancel out t, so, so let me remove this portion as well. Now let's say if I cancel out t, if cancel out t, so which means now the function would be x of t, right? x n of t was like this, alright? This was x n of t. Where this was t, so you have the function as x and t. So this was 0, then you have a capital T, then you have a 2t, then you have 3t, 4t. Similarly, you have a negative t, negative 2t, negative 3t, negative 4t and so on. So now what do you say? If you cancel out t, so have a look. The function that we will have is x of n x of n all right and and over here also we would ca cancel out this t so have a look what remains is the function x of n would be now like this if this would now be n the function would be x of n and this would be 0 1 2 3 4 similarly negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 negative 4 and now we have proved that this is now depending on an integer value which is again representing time but not a continuous time a discrete value of time so i think that's all about it okay that's all about the introduction to continuous time signals and discrete time signals let's see if i have some point in the book a speed signal as a function of time and atmospheric pressure as a function of altitudes are examples of continuous time signals all right Similarly, the weekly Dow Jones stock market index is an example of discrete time signal. They have shown it in the graph. All right, you can check it out in the book. So have a look. This is range with, with it is not ranging continuously. It is defined for some discrete values of time. And similarly, we have other examples as well. So you can read it out from the book by yourself. This was the basic idea, and I believe we are clear. So that's all about this lecture. That's all about today. See you in the next lecture very soon, inshallah, maybe tomorrow. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.